everyone. Today I am working with the stamp set Penciled Pair. I signed up for a swap with a group of demonstrators from the Midwest and we like to swap new products when they come out. So um, I'm swapping with this one. We all pick a different stamp set and that way when we get all of our cards back we've got samples with all kinds of stamp sets and some that maybe we don't own so we can show our customers. So my choice was Penciled Pair. I am always drawn to the sketchy stamp sets because I like to I like to draw so um, this is something that I would maybe draw and I like just um, having something that looks hand drawn and I like to play around with how I'm going to color them so this one I did with just white colored pencil and it kind of looks like a chalk drawing a charcoal and chalk drawing and then um, painting this is done with the pastels Stampin' Up pastels and watercolor pencil all this on crumb cake but for my swap, I'm gonna do some watercolor paper. So I thought I'd share with you a little bit of watercolor, um, some tips on how to do it on regular, very vanilla, but this one is also watercolor paper. And I thought I would show you this process. So let's get into it. I need to make a couple more, so I'm kind of working with uh, multiples here, but we'll go fast. So this is the paper I'm using as my background, and it's part of the Nature's Sweetness um, designer series paper. It's a lovely paper that has gold foil accents. And this actually carried over from previous catalog, which is pretty rare, but it's such a pretty paper. I was happy to see it. So it's got pebbled path as its color. And I love these prints. They're nice background papers. And that little gold accenting is really nice. This one is like totally gold. Um, this one is fun if you cut out each one of these and make six cards and then you can add some accent coloring if you wanted to with sponges or markers. Um, it's just a fun little paper. This one's a great background. I think that's all of them. That one's pretty too. So it's a really pretty paper. It's a specialty designer series paper because of that foil. And I'm using up this one, this is the last of it, because I've already made a bunch of swap cards. This is my last, uh, I think I need three more. <laughs> and I thought, oh, before I finish, I'll do one on, uh, on video so that you can see it. Now I'm gonna be using a template from the catalog. And if you've seen my last few videos, you'll notice that I'm going in a row. So the first card I showed when this catalog came out with Citrus Blooms, I used this template. My second one with Wildflower Designs, I used this one. So now I'm using this third um, card design template. And I just think this is really a fun way to kind of force yourself to have a starting point. Sometimes looking at a blank page or a blank canvas can be intimidating. So this gives you a starting point and I think this is really fun. And um, I'm, I'm planning on using it. Now you can switch it up. So like, for example, this template is basically this one, except instead of a circle, they used a little half thing here and they don't have a ribbon. So you don't have to stick to it 100%, but it just gives you a nice um, place to start. I was talking with another one of my downline actually recently, and she was um, saying how sometimes just starting a card idea is intimidating. And I said, yes, I get it. Um, and here's a good way to jump start your creativity. So I'm kind of my plan for the next few weeks is to just go through these and use them all up and just see how fun they can be. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. This is the third one. So I'm going to cut my little strips and I'm cutting them four and three quarters tall. And then I am cutting them one inch wide. I need three per card. I'm gonna fast forward and cut the rest because I need them anyway. Okay, so my card base is Pebbled Path. And then I am using a second base, like a little matte layer in Pebbled Path also, kind of a tone on tone. And I like to put these down kind of um, from the outsides in. So I'm going to grab some liquid glue. Now these have this uh, designer series paper has writing on it so I do want to make sure that they're going the correct way. <laughs> 
So I'm going a quarter of an inch off the edge. I kind of use my grid here as a guide. You can also give yourself a little straight edge. I like liquid glue for this because I can move it a little bit if I need to. So then I'm going to do this other side. And then I save the middle for last and just kind of center it between the two. Okay, and I'll do the rest on fast forward. All right, so I've got my pieces here. Now I also needed some watercolor paper and I'm cutting it out with this deckled square or deckled circles and I'm choosing the let's see one two three four five six seventh size there are 14 all together and I'm going with the one right in the middle and I've already cut them and I wanted to show you that the paper um, watercolor paper it's it was actually I cut it with a little bit off the side so I intentionally went off the page which was kind of nice actually because then I was able to fit two across um, the one piece of watercolor paper so I just kind of left this edge off when I ran it through you could cut an entire circle and then trim that off at the end if you wanted to all right so I'm going to stamp with Versamark ink I don't know if it's ink for some mark substance. <laughs> and I'm going to stamp the big pair. Now watercolor paper has a smoother side and a rough side usually. Uh, at least this one does. And I'm going to go on the smoother side. It's just a little nicer for uh, sometimes for stamping and embossing. But then you've got the paper quality, the um, heavy duty paper for watercoloring. But um, you don't have to worry as much about that. But the bumpiness is sometimes hard to stamp on. So. Um, I'm going to go with the smoother side. It's also convenient because I teach watercolor at the local park district and sometimes when we're practicing strokes we practice on our paper and um, so I have lots of little practice papers and I hate to just throw them all away but we use them every week so I end up with quite a bit. So I have little hidden gems behind these pairs. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to use my pears, and then I'm going to emboss with black. Okay, so I've got my embossing tray. I'm going to put my black embossing powder. You can see I'm running to the very end of my embossing powder here. Uh, that's okay. I do have another one, but. Um, I'm looking forward to our new embossing powder, the company that used to make our embossing powder no longer does, and we've shopped around, we're going to use WOW embossing powder, which I think a lot of you may have used, it's a pretty popular brand. I noticed that um, people have been talking about how it's hard to find embossing powder in stock anywhere, so it's not just Stampin' Up! that's having a problem with embossing powder. Even I noticed people t saying that they couldn't find it at Michael's, which is so... Anyway, I'm going to clean up my edge here. pairs done and then on the inside I'm also going to use some stamping as well. This time I'm going to stamp in just black memento ink. We are still going to watercolor with that. Um, sometimes it's okay to use memento to watercolor if you're just doing something really quick. Um, it'll work just fine. I'm going to go at the bottom here. There we go. Alright, and one more thing we're going to stamp is our sentiment. And that'll be our stamping done. And I'm going to show you, we're going to use thanks for being you, but we're going to divide it into two parts. So I'm going to use 
my black Stampin' Write marker and some scrap old olive. I love when I can use up these little scraps because we end up with a ton of them. I don't know about you, but when you cut that matte layer, that four by five and a quarter, you end up with these little half inch strips and I end up with a lot of them. And I hate to throw them away, but it sometimes takes a while to use them. So when I can use them, I'm really happy. So I'm going to divide this into two. So I'm gonna do the for being you on the inside and the thanks on the outside. And I've already got the for being you inked up pretty well. So, because I did a bunch of these cards already. So I'm gonna continue with that one first. And so I'm just gonna use the marker to add the ink exactly where I want it and leaving off the thanks. Now this only works with these uh, water-based markers. You cannot do this with, I mean, you maybe can do it really quickly with your Stampin' Blends, but what happens is Stampin' Blends are a permanent ink. It's like a Sharpie. And so that'll permanently color your stamps and you'd have to be so fast to then get it down on your paper because it kind of is gonna dry right there on your rubber stamp. So, it works with the stamp and write markers beautifully. I love the stamp and write markers just for their ability to color on stamps because you can get multiple colors on one image. All right, so now you have to clean this really, really well if you're gonna use it again because then you don't wanna accidentally get the words you don't want. So I'm gonna clean it really well. check it just because I know that um, sometimes you can have a little residue on that stamp and scrub so it'll show up so I'm just gonna grab a scrap paper see what do I have laying around here some more watercolor paper and I'm just gonna kind of go like this so you can kind of barely see because my stamp and scrub might have had some residual ink in it so I'm just gonna go like this until I don't see it anymore. I no longer see it. All right, so now my stamp is clean and I'm going to use my marker and just do the thanks. Now I'm trying not to go to the tip, I'm using the side and being kind of gentle, gentle. If you kind of, if you go back and forth like this, you can damage your tip. So you can see I'm using the side of my marker. It's a little tricky getting this one centered because it's a red rubber stamp, which I like for their stamping quality, but that clearness of the photopolymer is nice too pros and cons for everything, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna, I need to give myself a little space. Pardon my head coming down here. There, okay. So now I'm just gonna take my paper snips and I'm gonna cut a little angle. And here I want it to be straight on one side and then angled on the left side. Okay. All right, so all my parts are done. Now, I'm, and I have some coloring tips for you, and then I'm also gonna show you a tip for how I tied the ribbon on. So, I thought it might be fun to show you a couple different ways to watercolor this pair, because it was really fun for me. I had to do a bunch of them, and I couldn't decide what I liked better, colored pencil or just ink, right, with the, with the water painter. So, I'm gonna do both ways for you, and I thought that might be interesting. I can't find my water painter. You know, I took it to the kitchen to fill it. No, that's the, it's still in the kitchen. Okay, so now I got my full water brush. I almost opened it. <laughs> okay, so let's do a watercolor pencil first. So I grabbed some colors here from assortment one. I've got Old Olive, Daffodil Delight, Red, Real Red, and Early Espresso. The espresso I'm just gonna use on the stems of this one. This one, you can't really see that stem. The embossing powder is so thick there. And I'm actually going to use it on the stem 
And this one, just because it's such a skinny little area, it'd be harder to brush. You could use a marker there too, or leave that off entirely. Okay, so for the watercolor pencil, you can lay down some color right from the pencil. And my thought with this one is to not overthink it. I am just putting down some old olive, going around the pear. I'm leaving some areas because I want to leave some daffodil, like the pear has got some multicolor going on. And I don't know if there's that much color going on in a real pear, but <laughs> I think it looks pretty on a stamped pear. So, and that's what I care about here. Okay, so I've got my old olive, and then I'm gonna throw in some daffodil. Now you could leave it like this and not even add water if you wanted to, because isn't that pretty? Gonna add a little bit of red just for a pop of color. It really shows up nice with all that black. And I really like that. Just added a little something something. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that. And then let's do this one. So I'm gonna add a little bit of red. Since that's what's in my hand. I just want a pop of red, so it's not a lot. I'm gonna add some yellow. And then I'm going to go in with the old olive. Now it is harder to color with the pencil on this embossed image because there's all those raised areas and edges. So it's not really filling in all the little holes. But when I add the water, it'll start to fill in those little holes. So it's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, the watercolor pencil is nice for people who are a little bit afraid of watercolor get the look without the worry but I hope that I show you on the next one that it's really easy okay so I've got all my color down and now I'm just gonna take the water brush and I'm gonna kind of smear these out a little bit so I'm just going to and I don't want to mix mix my colors up and make mud so I'm gonna stick with one color I'm gonna come in by the old olive it dries um, once you start smearing it the color will get lighter so you might want to like I'm not even sure that I put down enough pigment here. We're gonna see in a minute. And I wonder when I'm done, if you're even gonna be able to tell the difference between the one that I used the pencils and the one that I used the ink. We'll see, I'll put them side by side and you can see if you can tell the difference. Okay, so I've got my olive kind of blended in here and now I'm going to move into and you can wipe in between I like to keep sometimes my stamp and scrub right by so I can just get some of that pigment off before I move on to the next color so now I'm moving into that yellow daffodil and it's okay if the colors blend a little bit because that's the prettiness of watercolor and then I'm going to come straight into that red and let that blend out a little bit so there it is. Now I think I could use a little more olive on the corner. So you can either color like that or you can pick up right from the pencil and add it like that too, which is a fun way to use the pencils. Okay, so we did that one. I'm gonna clean this off. And then I'm going to do this. Now, like I said, this is not, I didn't use stays on waterproof ink here. I just used the Memento ink it's dried so it's okay and I'm working quickly if I was using like a regular ink like one of our water-based uh, Stampin' Up pads this would not be a good idea <laughs> it would smear all together I mean you could probably if you worked really fast get away with it but all right so I'm gonna go in and get that olive going I'm gonna go to all of the pears and do all the olive I think the beauty of this one is the sketchy look of it. You don't have to overthink it. It doesn't have to be perfectly colored or perfectly done because it's a sketchy little pair. And let's go into the yellow and that red. And I'm just not overthinking it. I'm just going right in there.
Okay. All right, that is one. Now let's do this one with ink, and I think that'll be fun. I'm gonna get the pigment off of here. If you squeeze it, the water comes out, and it can kind of go like this. But if you use a regular paintbrush, if you have some at home too. Okay, so I like to work right from my ink pads, which I think is fun because I'm kind of a messy crafter anyway. <laughs> but if you don't like that, you can always squeeze a little bit of ink. You can take a block and just kind of um, stamp it into your ink and work off the block. Or you can squeeze some of the ink if you have little re if you have the reinkers. You can squeeze those into a little palette. I just like this because I it'll end up you know I can I feel like any ink that's left here if it drips into there that's okay. So and I'm using water and this is water based ink. So my thought is this is all okay, <laughs> but that's me. All right, so let me do these pairs. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. This time we're going to, um, I'm going to start with, I have this yellow close to me, so I'm gonna start with the yellow and I'm gonna get a little yellow down and I'm working fast. I, if you notice, I wash my brush on my hand. I do that a lot. Okay, and then I'm going to go into the olive and I'm going to just spread it on there. And don't overthink it. You could color 50 pairs and they're all going to look different. You just kind of go with it. There. See how fast that was? I mean, that pair took seconds. I don't know about seconds, but really fast. Okay, now I think I still have olive on my brush, so I'm going to go in with that and do these little ones. There we go. Sometimes if you feel like you need some more water, squeeze the brush. So I'm gonna clear off that olive because that's dark and I don't want to get my yellow mixed up. Okay. So fast, just throw it on there. And then just a touch of red. That's it. That's so fast, right? Okay. But I think it looks really pretty. Okay, so let's put these together and I'll show you my little ribbon trick. Okay, I did some earlier. All right, like I said, they're not gonna be the same. They're all gonna be different. And I don't even know which one is the pencil one anymore. Is it this one? See, which one is the pencil one? I do know, actually, now that I can see it, but that's because I can see it a little close up. Uh, I bet you can, I bet you can't tell. <laughs> if you can tell, tell me. Which one is the pencil one? I mix them up, I don't even know. These, I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna put these in. I'm gonna put the insides in on fast forward so you don't have to watch that and then we'll slow down and I'll show you how to put the whole thing together. Okay, now for the ribbon, here's my trick. The ribbon is supposed to look like it wraps all the way around and then ties at the edge with some linen thread. And I had to make 18 of these cards. So here's a way to save on some ribbon if you're ever doing multiples for birthdays or Christmases or whatever it is you're doing multiples for. So I'm going to take my tear tape and I'm gonna put some down, wrap it around one side and tear it. And I love the look of this ribbon with the, the linen thread kind of holding it together. It's such a pretty look. 
and this way is so easy. So we're gonna go around. Okay. All right, so I've got my tear tape down. Now I'm using this new basic beige bordered ribbon. Basic beige is a new color. I really like it. And um, this ribbon is really nice. It's kind of a neutral and it can go with just about anything. You can even use your um, ink to color it in different colors. Um, it's a really nice ribbon to have. It's currently on low inventory, amazingly, already. People are always liking it. I guess I'm not the only one. Okay, so I'm going to tear off my tear tape. I'm going to put the end of my ribbon on the back and press down and bring it around to the front. Now I'm going to kind of stick it down a little bit. Then I'm going to loop it up with my finger and press down like so. Okay. And now I'm going to take this linen thread and I'm going to tie it around that looped part. We all probably have ribbon saving hacks, right? <laughs> Faux bows and whatnot. So hopefully this one is useful to you. Maybe you do something similar already. Let me know. Um, I have a Facebook page called Beth's Paper Cuts Idea Sharing Group. And if you have, you can share things that you do on that group too. I don't like, um, I won't let anybody put links to their own site since it's a site that I manage, but you can certainly share and put a watermark on your picture. Okay, so I've got my bow tied. And now I'm gonna come in with my scissors and cut it like so. And it looks like this ribbon wrapped all the way around the card and then tied on the side because no one's gonna see that it doesn't once I put that pair down. So then imagine how much ribbon I'm saving because I'm not using any of this and all the way around. So I'm saving several inches of ribbon, which maybe is not a big deal on one card, but when you're making 18, it is certainly a big deal. <laughs> All right, so let me show you how I put this card together and then um, I'll do the rest on fast forward. I don't want little mini ones, I want regular size ones. Let's see. All right, so I've got my pair going all the way to the edge on this layered piece and then I'm going to stick the whole thing onto a card base also in Pebble Path and then I'm going to add my thanks here I will use a mini one or two Okay, I was distracted for a moment by children needing car keys. <laughs> All right, so it's always something. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stick my little thanks right there. And then for my final addition, I'm gonna add some of these neutral adhesive backed sequins. And at first I was trying to decide, do they go on the, up here on the, what am I trying to say? the watercolor piece or do they go on the background here and can you see them on the background I think they add a nice sparkle and I'll do the next one up here and you tell me what you think uh, I'll do this on fast forward till I get to the actually I'm gonna show you the ribbon one more time because I think it is awesome all right so I'm gonna stick my ribbon down come to the front I'm gonna press it down but then I'm gonna loop it up and then stick it down. And then a little bit of linen thread. I love linen thread too because it's economical. You can use a lot of it. It doesn't cost very much. If I cut too much linen thread, I don't worry about it. It's not like I'm gonna, I'm not wasting a lot of money. And yet it's pretty, it's like rustic. All right. The tricky part is holding it down. Having the um, 
tear tape underneath the whole thing really does help because you could put tear tape just there at the back and having it stuck all the way down really keeps it where you want it to be all right so now I am going to make my bow pretty tighten it just so I'm gonna cut the end so it looks like two separate ribbons there all right I'll put the rest together and you tell me what you think of sequins I hope that you enjoyed this video and had some tips with watercolor I think it's really fun to watercolor your stamps and especially if you don't overthink it just put that color down let it be what it is and just add some kind of randomness to it it can be really fun All right, what do you think? Do you like the sequins on the watercolor paper or on the background? I think both are good. Hmm. Tell me what you think. So I hope you liked my card. I hope you'll come back again. Please hit the subscribe button and leave me a comment. That helps the YouTube algorithms. <laughs> And um, I'm trying to increase my YouTube presence. So I hope that you'll give me a like or a comment or a subscribe. It'd be so great. And my kids are kind of watching my subscription and cheering me on. So it's uh, nice to show them some increases. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Bye.